Old Mother West Wind by Thornton Burgess. Chapter seven, Jimmy Skunk looks for beetles. Jimmy Skunk opened his eyes very early one morning and peeped out of his snug little house on the hill. Big round Mr. Sun, with a very red smiling face had just begun to climb up into the sky. Old Mother West Wind was just starting down to the green meadows with her big bag over her shoulder. In that bag, Jimmy Skunk knew she carried all her children, the Merry Little Breezes, whom she was taking down to the green meadows to play and frolic all day. Good morning, Mother West Wind, said Jimmy Skunk politely. Did you see any beetles as you came down the hill? Old Mother West Wind said no. She hadn't seen any beetles as she came down the hill. Thank you, said Jimmy Skunk politely. I guess I'll have to go look myself, for I'm very, very hungry. So Jimmy Skunk brushed his handsome black and white coat and washed his face and hands and started out to try to find some beetles for his breakfast. First, he went down to the green meadows and stopped at Johnny Chuck's house. But Johnny Chuck was still in bed and fast asleep. Then Jimmy Skunk went over to see if Reddy Fox would go with him to help find some beetles for his breakfast. But Reddy Fox had been out very, very late the night before, and he was still in bed fast asleep too. So Jimmy Skunk set out all alone along the crooked little path up the hill to find some beetles for his breakfast. He walked very slowly, for Jimmy Skunk never hurries. He stopped and peeped under every old log to see if there were any beetles. By and by, he came to a big piece of bark beside the crooked little path. Jimmy Skunk took hold of the piece of bark with his two little black paws and pulled and pulled. All of a sudden, the big piece of bark turned over so quickly that Jimmy Skunk fell flat on his back. When Jimmy Skunk had rolled over onto his feet again, there sat old Mr. Toad right in the path. And old Mr. Toad was very cross indeed. <clears throat> he swelled and he puffed and he puffed and he swelled until he was twice as big as Jimmy Skunk had ever seen him before. Good morning, Mr. Toad, said Jimmy Skunk. Have you seen any beetles? Mr. Toad blinked his great round googly eyes and he said, what do you mean, Jimmy Skunk, by pulling the roof off my house? Is that the roof of your house? Asked Jimmy Skunk politely. I won't do it again. Then Jimmy Skunk stepped right over old Mr. Toad and went on up the crooked little path to look for some beetles. By and by, he came to an old stump of a tree, which was hollow and had the nicest little round hole in one side. Jimmy Skunk took hold of one edge with his two little black paws and pulled and pulled. All of a sudden, the whole side of the old stump tore open and Jimmy Skunk fell flat on his back. When Jimmy Skunk had rolled over onto his feet again, there was Striped Chipmunk hopping up and down right in the middle of the path. He was so angry. Good morning, Striped Chipmunk, said Jimmy Skunk. Have you seen any beetles? But Striped Chipmunk hopped faster than ever and he said, What do you mean, Jimmy Skunk, by pulling the side off my house? Is that the side of your house? asked Jimmy Skunk politely. I won't do it again. Then Jimmy Skunk stepped right over Striped Chipmunk and went on up the crooked little path to look for some beetles. 
Pretty soon he met Peter Rabbit hopping along down the crooked little path. Good morning, Jimmy Skunk. Where are you going so early in the morning? asked Peter Rabbit. Good morning, Peter Rabbit. Have you seen any beetles? asked Jimmy Skunk politely. No, I haven't seen any beetles, but I'll help you find some, said Peter Rabbit. So he turned about and hopped ahead of Jimmy Skunk up the crooked little path. Now, because Ra Peter Rabbit's legs are long and he is always in a hurry, he got to the top of the hill first. When Jimmy Skunk reached the end of the crooked little path on the top of the hill, he found Peter Rabbit sitting up very straight and looking and looking very hard at a great flat stone. What are you looking at, Peter Rabbit? asked Jimmy Skunk. Shh, said Peter Rabbit. I think there are some beetles under that great flat stone where that little black string is sticking out. Now, when I count three, you grab that string and pull hard. Perhaps you'll find a beetle at the other end. So Jimmy Skunk got ready and Peter Rabbit began to count. One, said Peter. Two, said Peter. Three, Jimmy Skunk grabbed the black string and pulled as hard as ever he could and out came Mr. Black Snake. The string Jimmy Skunk had pulled was Mr. Black Snake's tail. And Mr. Black Snake was very, very angry indeed. Ha ha ha, laughed Peter Rabbit. What do you mean, Jimmy Skunk, said Mr. Black Snake by pulling my tail. Was that your tail? Said Jimmy Skunk politely. I won't do it again. Have you seen any beetles? But Mr. Black Snake hadn't seen any beetles and he was so cross that Jimmy Skunk went on over the hill to look for some beetles. Peter Rabbit was still laughing and laughing and laughing. And the more he laughed, the angrier grew Mr. Black Snake until finally he started after Peter Rabbit to teach him a lesson. Then Peter Rabbit stopped laughing for Mr. Black Snake can run very fast. Away went Peter Rabbit down the crooked little path as fast as he could go. And away went Mr. Black Snake after him. But Jimmy Skunk didn't even look once to see if Mr. Black Snake had caught Peter Rabbit. For Jimmy Skunk had found some beetles and was eating his breakfast.